Uh, jumping out a little bit early and hearing uh, so many you know brilliant people talking it was really cool to kind of catch a glimpse of that so thank you so much for having me here it's a pleasure working with you at Evernote um, and I look forward to a, a really great partnership in the future um, so I'm going to go ahead and share a screen and I will warn you that <laughs> technology is not my strong suit um, so I meddled with my slides a little bit so that's <laughs> that's going to be a little bit of a challenge and Sometimes uh, I have technical difficulties, but I promise you, I'm always worth the wait and the fumbling. So I'm gonna share screen really quick. And if you could let me know, Michael, if you can see it, that'd be awesome. Yep, we can see it. Just you can see it? Upgrade. All right, perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and pop on. Cool. So uh, what I'm going to be going over today are things that are working for us as an agency and an education slash training company in affiliate management, as well as what our clients are doing, of which we have hundreds. Um, and I went out and I talked to uh, some of them. And I got you know some insider information from them, as well as things that we're seeing, uh, in addition to things that we're doing in our own company. So these are all very data driven. Uh, recommendations that I'm going to be making and they relate primarily to affiliates but I think there's something in there for any business that's doing you know, any sort of sales online and the other little caveat that I will add here is that um, we specialize in direct response email marketing um, as a company so some of the things that I'm going to be you know teaching on will come from that lens but again I'm covering a ton of things from you know, launches, challenges, e-com, different niches, different verticals. So I know that there'll be something for everyone in this time. And once I'm done with this, I'll go ahead and open for questions. And I, I always love answering as many questions as I can. So please don't be shy. Uh, the five main concepts that I'm going to cover uh, today in our presentation is uh, why swimming with the current is a winning strategy right now. And I'll kind of deep dive in more into what I mean by that what verticals are growing due to COVID and which verticals I predict will continue to gain post COVID and the you know, current pandemic slash economic recovery that we're seeing both here in the US and globally, how free email list builds and challenges are setting up our clients as well as us for a tremendous amount of success, both in the short term and the long term, uh, which marketing medium has been booming in this COVID crisis and I predict will continue to boom um, as we go you know, forward in this new time and kind of why I'm, recommend, why I'm recommending that my clients stack cash in this time and what they're going to be doing with that money and what we plan to be doing with it as well. So here's why I messed up the slides. So I'm just going to give you them all at once. But a quick thing about me, um, I started selling from a very early age. My father was a missionary and he went all over um, the country really in Mexico kind of preaching, uh, open air preaching. He's one of those really annoying preachers that stands there with the bullhorn at fun events like concerts and football games. Um, so I'd be in front of him, you know, passing out pamphlets. So I like to say that, you know, I, I started selling very early and I used to convert people to Christ and I convert clicks to customers. Um, so it's, it's been a, a long storied practice with, with high stakes. Now I would consider myself a high ticket selling specialist, uh, as well as a specialist in affiliate marketing. So I've been doing this for a long time, online uh, marketing for 14 years, and I've done everything from sell door-to-door uh, -door SEO, um, you know, for $75 a month. And then by the time I left, I was selling $200,000 a month packages, um, direct response, copywriting. I've done a whole bunch of stuff online. And I'm very fortunate to work with amazing companies and clients that have really fantastic products that allows me to you know, do a deep dive review of their businesses, of their numbers, you know, of their margins, of you know, every part of their business so I can really understand how to help them in our consulting side. So that's why I have a ton of stuff to share with you today. I'm really excited. And our company, which is East Fifth, um, which I'm the co-founder of with my business partner, Alona Ruditsky, we have basically two sides of the business. One side of the business is an agency. So essentially we do the selling for you. So we go out and recruit affiliate partners to come in and work with you. And you know, we basically take responsibility for the outcome and for the numbers and we agree on a retainer and all that. On the other side of our company is what we call like our education 
side of the business, which includes uh, consulting and it includes uh, training programs that traditionally started at $10,000 and went all the way up to around $250,000 a year. So we have we cover the full, full spectrum on each side. So we either act as an affiliate partner or team for you, or we'll actually train your team in-house to do what we do for you. So you don't have to hire an agency like mine um, or an outside consultant. So in the last two years, we've trained over 250 companies and we work with many more on the consulting side. So some of our clients include ClickBank, um, Agora, ChiliPad, Dr. Mark Hyman, um, you name it. So we started in health and wellness and we branched out to financial, education, biz op, uh, e-com. So we, we've covered the full spectrum. We've trained everyone um, underneath that. On the agency side, also just a little thing, so you know kind of what numbers we're dealing with. Um, we've generated in the last three years a little over $67 million for our clients on the agency side. Um, that includes millions of leads, hundreds of thousands of customers. And on the academy and the training side in the last two years, we've helped them generate a little over $320 million with our methods and our processes. Um, so you know, we've really decided to niche down and focus heavily on affiliate marketing, and I truly believe that it is a recession-proof revenue stream, uh, primarily because you do things based on, number one, relationships with people, which are not dependent on algorithms, and number two, you're typically, with few exceptions, not prepaying for that traffic. Um, so in a time of recession, you know, we really want to hold that money back and you know, keep as much cash as we can because we're very uncertain about the future. So it's one of the reasons why I'm most passionate about teaching this and why I think if you don't have an affiliate program now, you should definitely add one. And if you already have an affiliate management program, in my experience, most of the time they have, you know, very inconsistent up and down revenue months. And I would, you know, recommend that you work with a company like mine or somebody else to get your revenue consistent and growing because that's, that's something that is very achievable for you and actually is much easier to do than most people think. So the first thing I'm going to teach on is swimming with your customer's current focus and fears. Um, you know, one of my biggest recommendations right now is to um, not roll out products and offerings that are not in alignment with your customers' current fears and focuses. You know, that's going to be a super uphill battle for you. And I've watched some of my clients try to do that and roll this stuff out, and it's been a failure. Um, and then I've watched some of us switch, including ourselves, and it's been a tremendous success. So, you know, right now, what's on your customers' minds are things like, you know, this global pandemic the protests, the riots, the economic uncertainty, and they are very unsure about you know, what's gonna happen in their future. So you know, giving them things and offering them things that are not top of mind is not only challenging, but I think it's also just kind of out of alignment um, and causes like bad relationships with your customers because it's a bit tone deaf. And I think that there are ways to capitalize on that and make it a, a very ethical capitalization whether you have products that fulfill that now, they're in the pipeline and creation, you know, there's a bunch of ways that you can kind of get around it and feel really good about it. And that's, you know, something that I want to help you think about in this time as well. So right now, you know, when this pandemic first started, your, your customers are likely thinking about things like, you know, hand soap, sanitizers, um, you know, the, there was a huge spike in concealed carry permits, a huge spike in products that boost immunity and keep people healthy. Uh, retirement advice suddenly became extremely, extremely important because people who are going into retirement with this happening, you know, have a lot of fear. So they want to be looking for information. So any sort of information programs, trainings, offers, supplements, et cetera, that were top of mind for customers boomed. And I think what we're seeing now is immunity tile offers and you know, kind of the concealed stuff, you know, some of the survival stuff starting to kind of dig down. And, you know, there's the other things that are starting to grow, the more like kind of normal fat loss offers or, you know, education offers are, are starting to come back up, but they still touch on like COVID and they still touch on these different things. So they're at least letting the customer know like, hey, I hear you. You know, I know that there's a global pandemic going on. I know that there's, you know, the civil unrest. I know all these things are going on. And I still think, you know, I can help you with this part of your life. Um, and, you know, this is why, right? So I think just making sure that you're using that in your language is going to be really important. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of what I mean. Um, Research is a, a com is a product that was just released in March. It's a sleep supplement. And that thing is 
on track to do over $100 million this year. And one of the reasons why I think they are booming so heavily is that they do exactly what I just said. They put that into the messaging, but you know, sleep is something that affects everyone and affects everyone 365 days out of the year all the time, regardless of COVID. You might be having more sleepless nights and you might have more anxiety, but you know, this is a type of offer that by just putting that lens on it, it's sold you know, a ton. Um, they've done, you know, I think over 30 million now in just these last three months. So they're going to continue to soar. And part of that is they have amazing marketers and copywriters, and it's a truly amazing product, but they hit just at the right time. And they're, you know, really giving the customer an understanding that they, they know what's going on with them. My Greenfields is another company that I think has really capitalized on this um, in a very ethical way. They're a non-toxic chemical company or cleaning product company. And they do everything from laundry soap, hand sanitizer, um, you know, dishwasher detergent, like you name it. And they moved over 600,000 units in like two month period of just their hand sanitizer. So they're, they're at the right time. You know, they're ready. They're giving the consumer a different option that really, really worked for them. And they had a huge boom. Pure Thrive is another one. They do liposomal vitamin C. And in March, they did $3 million when before that, particular SKU is doing maybe $50,000 a month. So, you know, by, by changing, either changing the vocabulary, the wording of, of what they're rolling out for the customers, like research, you can you know, do a really great job of that, or just having the right products ready to go. And, and they, I don't think either one of Pure Thrive or My Greenfields had an idea that this would boom, but now that we've seen it happen once, you know, I'm sure we can get a better idea of timing and like how to talk to customers and all that I think is a really important point. Um, if you do high ticket only, which is something that we traditionally did until COVID, um, some of the things that have been working for us is um, rolling out low ticket offers. So that's a big thing that we did, you know, before it would cost $10,000 minimum to work with us. And we rolled out something called Traffic Tribe, which is essentially a membership where you get to meet other affiliate partners and make deals with them and get some education for $3.97 a month. And it's done extremely well during COVID. And it also proved that we could do things at scale. And before, you know, we were thinking high ticket, high touch, right? So we basically proved that that model that we've been wanting to do and roll out does work and it definitely will work through COVID. So if that's something that, you know, you've been kind of battling back and forth, if you do high ticket, this is definitely something I would consider. Other things that have worked well for us, not only you know, inside of East Fifth Avenue, but also with uh, different masterminds that we're in, like War Room and um, Mimosa Mastermind and uh, Mindshare and you know, Fight Club and all these other ones that are you know, 25,000 plus dollar a year masterminds. What we're seeing is that in these high tickets, these are also working, which is um, removing the contracts, right? So instead of like a year long, you're, you're saying, hey, you can go month to month. Uh, shorten those contracts instead of a year to like a project basis, maybe like a 90 day sprint focus on a particular style of, um, you know, like thing, like let's say that you're like three months to get your sales team performing at X or get paid, you know, more on performance and less on retainer or a blend of just commission. If you're really certain about it, I've seen some of my people take equity in different companies um, through this as well, which, you know, if you have the ability to do that and it makes sense, that's another thing. Um, so I told you a little bit about Traffic Tribe, but when we launched this, we did um, like over $55,000 in, in 48 hours just on doing just like a light promotion to our small email list because people had been waiting to work with us. So if you are a high ticket person listening to this, like know with certainty that there's a bunch of people basically on your waiting list waiting to work with you, especially if you do good, do good work. Um, they just needed a price point that made sense for them. And, you know, that's something for you to consider. If your products and your offers right now, your company is not a fit for the current market, and you have an email list or, you know, a good social following, uh, what my recommendation would be, would be to put the offers that are not a good fit right now, and you're, you're uncertain will be a good fit for customers in the future, and either put them on hold or speed up products that are a fit or re-release products that are a better fit like from the past. So things that address their current needs and fears and focuses. Uh, one of the ways that you can still generate income while you're doing that is by promoting, you know, external third party offers, different companies offers. Um, and that will be a great way for you to make a good amount of money while you're making this transition and be able to feed your team, pay for ads, et cetera. 
So here's a couple quick examples that I'll give you. Uh, the Social Club is a company in Canada that is the adult social club. And they had 125,000 members all paying them a monthly or yearly fee to basically get access to their adult leagues. Well, when COVID happened, like it, it wiped them out, you know, naturally, obviously. And they had to lay off like 94% of their staff and all this other stuff started happening. But they had a large email list and a large following that did not monetize with third party offers. And once they started doing that, you know, rolling out like high quality olive oil or, you know, resistant bands or things that made sense for their target demographic that they went out and vetted and thought that they were high quality people on their email list and their social followings bought from them. And now they're generating money, um, you know, during a crisis that they normally would have never had access to. Some of my clients were rolling out beauty offers um, and they ended up turning back around and doing fat burning offers or blood sugar offers or anxiety offers. And that was just a much better fit. You know, they rolled out some beauty offers and just bombed during COVID. So they were able to just quickly say, you know what, we're gonna put this on hold to a different time when it makes sense. And we're going to go with the things that we know our customers are focused on right now. I think it was a really smart move. A good example of a, a relaunch would be the truth about vaccines, which is also known as the truth about cancer. They're a docuseries educational uh, company in the health space. And they've had the truth about vaccines uh, like launch for years. And it's just been a product that's just kind of you know sitting there. But with this current COVID thing and so many people looking for information on vaccines, they decided to relaunch it and they did over 300,000 leads in a month on an over seven figure launch. So, you know, this is just kind of going with the current, right? That's one thing that I, I just recommend that you do. Um, it doesn't have to be something icky or salesy. It can be something that your clients really, really need. And, and that's my favorite part about this. Second point is health, wealth, and education are booming. Uh, I could not believe the stat when I got it from uh, my ClickBank uh, C-suite, which is, you know, they're up 140% on the health and wellness in their company, which if you don't know ClickBank, it's a network of over 100,000 different vendors and affiliates. They've been around for 25 years. They process billions and billions and billions of dollars. They do around 500 million a year right now. And for them to be up 140% in their largest vertical in direct to consumer, that says something, you know, and it's going to continue. Like they are growing still month after month after month. Um, I predict they're going to continue growing in that way. So big, big thing I would recommend, you know, if you're not in direct to consumer health and wellness products and you have the ability to do so, I definitely would consider it. Um, I think it's going to con continue to grow as customers become, you know, more afraid to shop you know, in person. Um, and, you know, I just think that they're, since COVID, they're realizing they don't need to leave the house as much. Um, and certainly things like Amazon and all that are, are helping with that, right? So they're going to continue to worry about their physical health. And I think they're going to continue to draw back on doing things in person. So it's a great time to enter the health, wealth, and education markets. If you have an understanding of it or in a passion or it's been in the back of your mind, don't just do it to do it. Because I'm never a fan of anyone doing anything just because it's trendy. Um, do it if you, you feel strongly that it could be something that you could give a lot back to. Wealth is another one. So search volume for investments itself and investment advice is up 1,400% on Google. And financial offers are doing really, really well across the board. And we're seeing that it's not just like, you know, someone in the financial space talking to someone else in the financial space. It's financial talking to beauty, e-com, health, wellness, education, financial, you name it, because these people that are wanting to improve their lives in different areas are also going to want to continue to improve their wealth. So I definitely can recommend that you think about, you know, testing these offers to your audience if you haven't yet, because it could be, you know, really profitable for you and, you know, do your research and find the things that you believe in. But that's, you know, something that you can do is, is bring this stuff to your customers. You know, your customers are going to buy this stuff from someone. They might as well buy it on your recommendation if you did the research and believe that these different products, whatever they are, wealth, education, health, et cetera, whatever they are, and get paid a commission for that. Um, you know, Oxford Club did $4 million in 24 hours on their Bill O'Reilly webinar. So people are hungry for this information. They really, really want to take the reins of their lives back and figure out, you know, how to you know, continue to grow even with the prospect of inflation and stagnation in the economy and all this stuff. So this is definitely top of mind. I, I recommend that you look at it. Doom and gloom offers, basically what we call them, um, you know, that, that I think really address COVID would be something of interest. And then long-term investments will likely do well now and, and in the future. 
education is another big vertical. When I talk about education, I, I'm talking about people like, you know, Brendan Burchard and, um, you know, personal development on people that are teaching you skill sets, how to write copy, you know, how to code, all these other ones. Um, and here's just a few examples. Advance Your Reach was basically a company that for years, their last few years, they did around $10 million. And they were teaching people, regular people or entrepreneurs, how to get on stages and speak. You know, whether it was local stages in your city or whether it was, you know, national stages, you have what have you, they basically booked over 25,000 stages in a couple of years. So they're teaching how to do that. Well, when COVID happened, obviously that's something that, you know, could have wiped them out. They turned around and did a virtual summit in the most, I mean, it's the best virtual summit I've ever seen. And they did $10 million in 30 days, right? So, I mean, just imagine that for a company that did 10 million a year, that's just, you know, it's huge. It's hugely valuable. So you can start thinking about, these kinds of things. People are still hungry. They want to know how do we get on virtual stages like this. And then when COVID lifts, they're going to want to know, you know, how do I build up different revenue streams for my company besides just the one I was doing? Because likely many of us have, you know, only relied on one or two different um, things for Legion. Like for me, primarily it's been stages, speaking from stages and, you know, referrals. And now we're looking at it and we're spending more money on paid media and, you know, other things that I want to diversify. And I'm sure other people do as well. Um, people are also diversifying on their on their skill levels. So bookkeeping.com have a huge influx of people wanting to be bookkeepers. Uh, Stefan Georgi, who's a really famous copywriter in the direct response email space, uh, rolled out his RMBC course, basically teaches you how to write you know very good copy. It was a thousand dollar course. It did over three hundred thousand dollars in a couple of weeks just from literally him sharing it with his email list and his Facebook group. People are really hungry to get more education that's going to lead to them you know sharpening up their skills and being able to make money especially in this time of uncertainty with so many people being laid off um, my prediction with so many people being laid off is that we're going to have a flood of new entrepreneurs new vendors expats you know that are going to be offering their services and they're going to be looking for ways to make money you know from anywhere in the world the other thing that i'm going to cover with you today is is why i think email marketing is stronger than ever um, that's what we're seeing. Granted, I will acknowledge that um, I am an, a direct response email marketing specialist. So like naturally, right, I'm going to be really happy when my vertical, my choice, you know, does well. But to be honest, the reason why I picked email and direct response is because in general, you know, get, getting someone's email name and email marketing them is going to generate a lot more business than pretty much any other vertical, um, lifetime revenue-wise and average order value rise. So that's always been a preference and direct response has always been a preference is I'd rather you know, get the customer to do something, buy something, enter in their email, et cetera, than you know, branding. That has always been far more my interest. So email names are still worth more than push or social. It depends, you know, if you're getting people from, from Google or Facebook, I still think it's much better pound for pound. Um, it will beat us on certain things, but I still think it's much better, especially when it comes to lifetime value and average order value. And this is across the board on our testing with ourselves and our partners. So I went ahead and got a quote from Jimmy Kim, who's the, the co-founder of Sendlane, which is an email automation platform like, you know, Maripost um, or MailChimp or something like that. And he let me know that open rates are, are across the board up 22% since COVID and they continue to stay around that range. And this is coming from someone who sends, you know, 1.2 billion emails every single month. And they also specialize in direct response email marketing. So he's seeing that. And Liz Graham, who is one of the top list managers in our space, she manages millions and millions of names, a blend of, of buyers and customer lists. And she also verified that her clients are having the best year they've ever had from their email list revenue performance. So it's, it's up a lot. And the one thing that she did share with me is that right now, in her experience, the kind of flash in the pan offers, so like maybe the you know, N95 masks or you know, the, the biz op opportunities or you know, these immunity offers or things like that, they're starting to go down and we're seeing that too as customers start to crave normalcy. And I think you kind of just, you know, I just told you the slide before to look at financial doom and gloom offers and stuff like that, but like that should be something that you test, right? And I do think it will continue being good, but again, you know, that, that delicate balance between, you know, going a little bit outside of our comfort zone and trying new things and seeing if our customers like it 
and also making sure that you know we're staying in alignment with things that we know and and know how to do and know what our customers our customers are actually interested in. Some things that we're doing around email marketing that's working well for us is we're having a ton of luck with influencers doing giveaways um, and challenges, and then we're using that to get those names on our email list pretty cheaply. So if you haven't worked with influencers on social media uh, because you don't like that you can't collect names or you know things like that, then this would be something that I would recommend because they're really, really hungry right now for paid partnerships that are going to pay them. They also took a big hit um, when this COVID crisis started happening. So I think there's a tremendous opportunity to work with people like that. Um, challenges are working really good, and I'm going to go even deeper on that you know, in the next slide. But Challenges are working really, really well to, to generate names on email lists. So um, we're seeing that work with both warm traffic, which is what I consider affiliate traffic to be, and cold traffic, which is what I consider you know, buying ads on Facebook and, and Google to be. Uh, they're backing up super, super well. And of course, you know, I'm seeing that cold media costs are also falling, especially across Facebook. So um, one quick pivot that I would tell you if you know, this, this is like a higher level thing, so if you don't do affiliate marketing, this won't apply to you as much, but one thing that's working really well in email marketing in particular that's a good pivot is if you have the money, you know, set aside, I would prepay to get calendar space with these people. So to have the influencers bumping you up in their content scout schedule to talk about your products and services by prepaying them, or having, you know, list managers like ListGram you know, bump up your promotions and offers on email by prepaying them or guaranteeing them money if you know how your numbers back out for your products and services because that will get you a lot more traffic volume because these people are also wanting to, you know, stack as much cash in their war chest as they can. And, you know, what I'm recommending that my clients do with this, with this stack of cash is, one, prepare for uncertainty. That's also always the main thing. We don't really know what's going to happen in our country, um, you know, or, or anywhere else in the world with what's happening. And then two, there is so much awesome talent that is on the market right now that you can get that normally you probably couldn't afford or they were happy and they didn't want to leave. Like, there's so much great talent out there that you can hire and bring in right now. And that's, you know, a great place for you to be storing cash for it. And then as well as rolling out new products and services quickly. Um, you know, or capitalizing on good opportunities that come up, maybe like buying, you know, a dip, another business. Like, that's one of the main reasons that we're also saving, you know, as much money as we can because we want to, you know, spend more on, on paid media and grow that leg of our business. And that's what we're recommending all of our clients and the ones that are implementing that I think feel a lot less anxiety, uh, which is another reason why I strongly recommend that you do third-party offers or roll out an affiliate program if you have not yet. So uh, the list build is something that, you know, I think makes sense to roll right over from email marketing. I, I would love for you guys to do more of that if you're not doing it. It has both a short-term and a long-term play. And uh, we got this idea and strategy from our business coach and mentor, Chris Guerrero. He owns four eight-figure businesses, one nine-figure business, and he works with us once a week in our company, and he's amazing. He also works with you know, multi-billion dollar corporations, and he's been through four or five recessions now. So um, you know, he's an OG in that way, and he told us, you know, what you should be doing is trying to get in front of your customers more and more, free trainings, webinars, you know, kind of challenges, launches, all these other things, is you know, get in front of them more and give them value and that will be the short-term play, which, you know, you, you do that by giving them value and collecting their, you know, their names and their emails and keeping them, you know, engaged and informed. And then the long-term play is when spending comes back to, you know, pre-COVID levels, which it will, um, you know, you're going to be top of mind for them to purchase from because, you know, they might have spent a little bit with you or did the free trainings, but it's going to boomer back, boomerang back around and you're going to be the one that gets the business. And that's something that he's done through every recession and, we're definitely seeing that, you know, pay off for us post-COVID. So if you're focusing on doing email marketing, the things that are working well with us to list build is um, information to consumers or customers or potential clients in the form of communities, challenges, webinars, trainings, and launches. So I'm going to give you a, a couple of quick, like, examples. So I told you about our Traffic Tribe membership, but, you know, again, it's the first time we ever did a low-ticket thing. So what we did before was we did what we called deal-making community trainings bi-weekly. So I'd get on for free, do a training. We had thousands of people come through literally just from my email list or my personal Facebook or 
you know, our team stuff. Like it wasn't anything that we even spent money on. We just tapped into our community, asked them if they needed help, and the answer was a resounding yes, um, which has been great. And then we launched Traffic Tribe, you know, in April, and it did 55,000 in 48 hours. And that 55,000, you know, is going to equate to monthly recurring revenue for us, you know, every month, which is great because, you know, my main thing is I don't want to let go of anyone on my team. I want them to stay with us through COVID, and I want to hire um, so, you know, I'm trying to focus on things that are going to build residual recurring revenue in our company. Challenges uh, are another thing that are just crushing it. Um, so we're seeing people like Roland Frazier and Jay Abraham and, you know, all these, like, you know, guys starting to do challenges and they're working really well. If you want to learn about challenges, I would recommend that you follow a guy named Pedro Adal, He's kind of like the, the specialist in challenges. Um, but it's crazy. I haven't seen anything like this before, but like, it's literally like you can't miss these challenges. Like you give them, you know, five days, kind of the sweet spot, five day challenge and you, you know, start it slow. Right. So with like Rollins, which did, you know, almost $900,000 on a $9,700 media spend, which is crazy. You know, day one is like, you know, it's a buying business challenge, but day one's like change your social media profile. Super easy. But by the time you get to five, you're doing like more complex things. And it's great because it built up such a great ascension model for them. You know, it's $55 to join the five day challenge. You have to pay to be in it to acquire the name. And then they have a whole, you know, series, you do the challenge and they have a whole ascension ladder series of, you know, $2,000 program, then a $10,000 program, then an invitation to join war room. So we're seeing for high ticket people, these challenges are a great ascension path or ladder up. And I uh, definitely recommend that you, you know, think about it if you want. And if, by the way, if there's anything that I'm talking about in here that you guys want more information about, I'm going to include my email address at the end. Feel free to email me and um, I can show you some of this stuff if you want it. Um, but challenges, man, they're the one thing that you can't miss. In fact, we're launching a challenge tomorrow um, internally. And um, after we get through that, we're going to launch a challenge on paid media. So, um, you know, we're, we're going to go in. We've seen our clients do it and it's working really, really well. Truth About Vaccines and the Food Revolution launch, I touched on that before, but it's a launch and they're both relaunches of the same product that have been happening for years. And this is working still, right? They changed a few things to address COVID certainly and, you know, made sure they weren't tone deaf, but they relaunched it to acquire email names and each one of them did over 300,000 email subscribers in a month, right? And multiple seven figure launches. So people are still opting in, they're still buying right now. And I think that's an important thing to know. Uh, again, I touched upon that O'Reilly webinar, about $40 million in 24 hours. It was a hot list build, you know, grabbing email names in front of it and then pushing it through. And then I touched upon our deal making stuff, super organic and it worked really well for us. So I think it's a great way to do four things at once, which is build brand loyalty and deepen your relationship with your community. Uh, sell low ticket front ends, especially those challenges you can, you know, go up or even traffic drives, you can go up and our Ascension model is, you know, $397 a month. And then ten thousand dollars, you know, twenty five thousand dollars, and you know, it just keeps going. So, you know, for us, it's a great thing too because we can add value at every spot. They just get more time with us and our team, um, more introductions and all that stuff as that kind of grows up. But it's great for us because now we have a stable recurring revenue stream, um, and we've built our email list up a lot. So we're just continuing to talk to them top of mind. Um, and that's the same thing that Roland did and, and Jay Abraham and all these other guys. And I think finally, you know, you position yourself again for when consumers and clients are buying normally again, you position yourself as the experts that's given them value over this whole time, um, you know, and, and they're going to spend their increased spend with you when this is all said and done. And so the last thing that I'm going to recommend is, you know, doubling down and going deep on your joint venture deal. So um, my first, first recommendation is decide first on whether you are looking as a company to, you know, stack cash and go into hyper growth mode right now, or are you looking to, you know, build a brand um, that is sellable and doesn't really rely on third party offers. And I'll tell you, I'm sure you're thinking yourself sitting there right now, like, well, I want to do both. But like, honestly, I've seen people try to do both and they just don't do it well. Like, it, I don't think anything in life works when you're like one half, you know, one foot in, one foot out, right? So definitely decide like what you're going to be doing right now. I think you guys kind of know that for me right now, um, you know, we've been working on our brand for years. Now we're hyper growth mode and really trying to make sure that us and our clients are, are going to, you know, we're thriving. We want to continue to thrive um, through this, this COVID crisis. 
Um, so decide, what are you going to do? There's no right or wrong way, but it's going to determine your strategy and your plan of action next. So if you are in hyper growth mode, um, I would definitely up or start the number of third party emails that you're doing, um, sending out things that are top of customer mind, right? Going with the flow. So um, definitely that would be the, the first recommendation that I, that I would do and start, you know, grabbing email names if you haven't done that. And if you're an affiliate partner now, I would up the amount of reciprocals and third-party offers that you're doing. So some of our clients are going from two to four JV deals a month or quote unquote affiliate deals a month to 10 to 12, right? So they're really increasing that um, and spending more time, you know, doing webinars with the influencers and, you know, just, just going deeper with that so they don't burn out their customer list, but they're certainly, you know, increasing that volume and they're generating a lot more money for their business. For those that are in brand building mode, here's the secret. Here's the little secret sauce for you. You don't have to promote everyone. I think that's a really icky um, kind of thing that people think about affiliate marketers. So I'm going to be the first one to tell you that I'm happy to say no to any product service promotion that comes you know, across my desk that just doesn't make sense for the end user. Like I'm not going to you know, promote if I have a vegan, you know, food company, I'm not going to promote ButcherBox, right? It just doesn't make sense. It's a, it's going to go against my entire brand. So I'm fine saying no. But if you are a, you know, major brand and you want to do third-party offers, but you don't want to do that many, what I would do is go really deep instead of really wide. So a good example of this would be, you know, like Wellness Mama, something that we work with, they have a major brand, you know, millions of email names. They're very reputable in the health space. Um, people really look for, to them for advice, and you know, Katie takes her reputation very seriously. But she does promote ser- some third-party offers, like Paleo Valley, which ma- makes fermented grass-fed beef sticks, and these different infrared saunas, and you know, these parenting, you know, how to be a better parent, like these different types of offers. So what we recommended, and this is something that they're doing, is, you know, instead of just doing, like, one email solar promotion or, you know, just posting it on their Instagram, to go super deep and do that multiple times throughout a month, add them maybe for a week to, you know, their thank you pages or their autoresponder flow, um, do more webinars with them, you know, founder to founder, you know, get them on each other's podcasts, right? So you just end up, instead of maybe doing, you know, 10 a month, you do 10 a year, but then you negotiate, you know, a higher commission level or CPA, uh, you know, amount to do that, right? So, or even, you know, a major brand like like Wellness Mama can get people to prepay to do that sort of package. So, you know, now you can kind of create your own, you know, promotional schedule and style, but you have the prepay money in already, which I think is a really good thing uh, when you're doing joint ventures. So something to think about. Quick little case study on one of my clients in the month of March. Um, they, you know, have been they're uh, a, like a medical uh, company, and they went from doing one to two thousand dollars a month to forty eight thousand dollars in the month of March with just third party offers that were going with the flow for their customers. And they didn't have a large, you know, email list, but they just went out and they sourced carefully, you know, what things that they believe would help their consumers and their clients. They, you know, promoted them and they made, you know, a great amount of money that, you know, it's not a a low amount of money for them and certainly life-changing money for their company. And that's definitely a feeling that I would love for you to have. Last little thing, if the traffic is only going kind of like one way, so meaning like if, you know, I'm only promoting your products and services and you're not promoting mine in return, maybe because my products don't make sense for your current demographic right now. Like, for example, if I had a live event company, right, that would make sense. Uh, What I would do is get an increased CPA or commission to do that, or that plus faster payment terms, because, you know, wanting to make sure that you're getting, you know, paid is super important, getting paid faster is even better. Um, And then get in writing, if it does make sense later, maybe they can promote the live event, you know, when COVID is lifted, but get that in writing, because I think people tend to make very like loose handshake agreements or an agreement with someone who left or, you know, whatever. And I I cannot stress enough how important it is for any sales, you know, agreement, just get it in writing and both sides agree on it. Um, So again, uh, the reason why I really think it's important to double down and go deep on your joint ventures is because your customers will buy what's on top of mind for them. And, you know, if you really care about your customers, you can go out 
and find a bunch of stuff that are super high quality, you know, recommend them to them, and they get paid a third party, you know, commission on it, I think that there's, that's a super ethical thing to do. Um, and if you don't do it, they're going to buy it from someone else, and they could buy something that's not, you know, super good for them. So, you know, just a thought. So again, my five biggest recommendations for you, I'm just going to rattle them off really quick, but um, focus on acquiring more email names. Point period to end. You can do that on challenges, trainings, and webinars. Get yourself set up for now. Get yourself set up for the future. Um, you know, this is a short-term and a long-term play. Go with the current. You know, double down with what's working and what likely will work in the future and kind of put on hold things that might not be, you know, actually, you know, if they're going against the grain for your customers, that might be something to consider. Definitely talk to them, you know, if you can and you're willing to. Customers will tell you, you know, what they want and what they need. Um, if you want, decide to do more third-party offers, but do it your way. You know, you don't have to make it icky or weird or anything. You can do it with super integrity. That's why we have such a great reputation as a company. Um, you know, do it in a way that makes sense. It could and should be a stable part of recurring revenue for your business, and I highly uh, recommend it. And then roll out, you know, what your high-ticket customers might be asking for, which is less strict term, paper performance, you know, lower ticket stuff, all that. Um, and if you, if you want, uh, let me know if you want any information on the stuff on my slides, if you have questions, that's actually my personal email address right there, Amber at East Fifth Avenue, um, and you can email me, we can give you things like a free affiliate toolbox, which is a 19-point checklist if you're just getting started with affiliate management, there's also some really great meat in there, you know, if you want to, um, you know, implement some higher level stuff. But if you also want to check us out um, and you want to, you know, meet our affiliate pool um, for you guys, we can do a two-week trial of our traffic trial. We're actually doing a deal-making connection call tomorrow from 11 to 1 p.m. Uh, if you guys want to get a peek and see, you know, who's in there, who can be a, a third-party, you know, affiliate for me, and then also it includes a ton of my material, so including our $2,000 start an affiliate program course, how to hire an affiliate manager, so all that stuff is in there. Like, you guys are not obligated to sign up for the free trial and stay on. I really don't care. I, I really just want to, you know, elevate the space. If it's a good fit for you, you'll stay. You know, I know it. But if it's not, just come in and learn from, you know, me and my team who really care about your success and are really going to give you, you know, a comprehensive overview of how this really works. And, you know, you guys are more than welcome to have that. So, um, yeah, that is, that's it. Thanks for listening to me uh, today, and I would, you know, be happy to hear any questions if you guys have them.